Hey guys, how are you? It's the Market Sniper here coming straight at you with regards to uh, an interesting topic. So Sunday's catching up, recovering a little bit after a wobbly week and uh, re-engaging with the markets and seeing what went down. And interesting, just saw Rao of Real Vision, um, good channel, worthy of a follow, do it, grab it, informative, good guests, spend a lot of money on their production. Uh, mainly good things um, to say anyway just uh, he was referring to the big short a film that I enjoyed and I suggest all of you watch if you haven't already done uh, I've seen it a couple of times and, and particularly in terms of times like now it gets you back thinking okay so how are we and where are we in the cycle right now so this is whilst it's a market sniper vid it could just as easily be a reset sniper vid um, of course they overlap um, but he's talking about spreads uh, on debt and low rated debt, lowly rated debt. And he's thinking about when triple B bonds were spreads at all time lows, which in other words, the market is very complacent about the risk on that debt. When there's suddenly a downgrade um, to that debt and they then fall out of being acceptable investment grade and they drop into the next category down. Um, and one of the key things with pensions is they have a mandate and they have to maintain a certain quality of debt. In other words, because they're looking after the granny's money, they have to make sure that they um, are doing the right thing by them and not taking undue risk. So this whole notion of prudence. So they have a mandate that says stay out of debt that is below a rating of this. Now at the moment, so many corporations are borrowing to buy their own stock, even if they are not up to any great good news. Everyone thinks of Apple and all of these others that have bought their own stock that are actually growing, got immense amount of cash, uh, highly profitable and entering into credit cards and just becoming the oligarchical monopolists in all fields. Um, many corporations are actually not in that beneficial state and are investing in their own debt and trying to keep their share price up for, no, uh, for want of a better phrase and are even losing money making less profit and getting even more indebted including huge corporates like coca-cola selling their sugar water um, they've got uh, <laughs> lower growth, uh, lower profitability, yet their share prices are higher uh, in the last de decade. And that's going to be re-rated down at some point. But anyway, the notion is their debt quality should be slowly dissipating downwards. And the rating agencies, because of relationships and various things, are not particularly dynamic or incentivized to downgrade people. It kind of, uh, it kind of feels like um, they've crapped on their doorstep, to put a, a finer point on it. Um, while that actually is their job, it's not a popularity contest you should be downgrading and as the debt cycle extends deeper and deeper and more and more get uh, dipping in their nose into the cheap trough of uh, credit that you and I don't get your credit card may still be 16 percent 15 percent 12 percent etc your personal loan may still be eight percent ten percent but other people corporations institutions are borrowing for very little anyway and they're buying their shares back eventually that debt becomes unsustainable and of course any small movements in interest rates makes it such a critical thing that the system all falls over so we've put our hand into that cookie jar so deep and grabbed so many cookies there's no way the hand comes back out out meaning return to normal interest rate uh, levels you've got to let go the whole game's got to end you've got to let go for that hand to come out it just doesn't come back up it's loaded up too big on the downswing anyway so the whole big short the whole movie etc uh, and the question was uh, he was asking um, how do you play it uh, and I'll tell you exactly how the snipers are playing it so I'll give you a preview into one of our premium trades I have spoken, I think, possibly of this before, but I didn't go into any great detail. Um, this is the high yield corporate bond ETF. So this is an exchange traded fund. It's the iShares Trust, iBox, USD, high yield. So it's American high yield uh, debt. And this is essentially... Um, less than a good quality corporates uh, that have been borrowing um, in the current environment of incredibly low interest rates, benign, the most benign environment thanks to the central bank you could possibly ask for, yet uh, with a whole bunch of headwinds that could come their way. Overall, structurally for us, this is uh, actually a technical setup that we like and trade. So I'm going to get a little bit more of the history for you. You can see that this was obviously trading at a lot higher value at one point, and then it had its big crap the bed moment of course that coincided with all things debt and toxification and I'm going to just grab the blue there for you and we'll highlight that 
So here you can see up top there, you're in and around the 108 level as a valuation. And then you spat down, you squeezed and you spat down as part of the 208, 209, and you got down to 6170. Uh, that was the lows of 09, 2009. Um, then they reflated everything, QE, infinity, etc., etc. Boom, shoo-ay, way, big like bungee jump with the bounciest bungee cord in the land. And next thing you know, you're back up and it's all love and light and off we go again. The next time we had a real concern and we got a bit toppy was here. We failed to make a new high there. We slipped and made a new low there, failed to make a new high. And then we were way on the slip and slide again on the downside that brought you the end of 15 into 16. This was the great China crisis, the debt of China coming to fruition, building cities everywhere, everything. This whole reflation was built on China. Um, buying everything in the world while the West was flat on its back. Then it was all puffed out and we had essentially inverted commas the Shanghai Accord as Rykard referred to it. And they needed deflation of currency so the dollar went weak because the Chinese Yuan and Rimbi are essentially pegged to the dollar and we've even seen it slip out of that pegging now recently so that it's not such a hard pegging. Um, and this has all been in a bid to put uh, give cuts to China some slack. So the, the second stage reflation so I call this impulse one um, and give it a big one the second reflation took place 16 and that came all the way along the Fed's going to reduce its balance sheet it's going to cut interest rates it's strong and off you go the dollar's going to marching into a separate tune to the rest of the world they're tough they're leading the charge they're going to reduce their, uh, their balance sheet they're going to uh, um, you know tightening quantitative tightening and on top of all of that they're upping interest rates well we said be Yes, yes, that's not going to last very long. And in fact, this cycle, if you measure it from that low to that uh, period, was uh, the better part of from 09 to 16 quite substantial seven years this little cycle with this whole little narrative of now america acting strong again now that china was on its knees uh didn't last nearly as long in fact we got only two more years coming into the end so we were coming the beginning of 16 by the end of 18 um, we were already falling and the whole Powell U-turn started to take place. So this is your Fed U-turn. So Fed U-turn and now of course we're right down to doing repo QE for um, unknown, unstated, seriously in need of liquidity. So that's your quadrillion derivative markets, probably Deutsche Bank, Commerce Bank, some American banks, who knows who's in there that are all needing hundreds of billions virtually on a daily basis that has been released by the Fed. So they've gone from quantitative tightening to actually relieving, but it's not QE. We're printing money, but it's not QE. Um, Fed QE, let's just pretend to call it, shall we, um, in a semi segue of almost truth um, that started 18 and 19 and then again that came with its own little reflation that so far has got as far as it has um, and as I've said the repo uh, push actually saw this get a little squeeze there and have an upside pop in uh, valuation which is now turning down we'll drop down to a, a lower time frame in a minute so you actually have these three impulses which are highly convex Convex means rounded at the top, so heavy loaded doming out with steep sides, um, bearish by structure as opposed to concave where you get rounded bottoms and you build a proper base and you grow up. So they have these spike back knee jerk reactions, usually policy driven. So China over here, of course, all the QEs one through to three over here. So just throw a couple of trillion at the problem there and hope uh, that that fixes it and no doubt they'll come again but overall for us if we change color now um, and in fact we can get rid of all of that this is a constriction in a bear trend and we're expecting a lower low than that at some point but we're expecting a serious breakdown in debt uh, valuation of high yielding low quality debt 
and that is essentially what the iShares trust box um, high yield anything that is high yield has to pay higher rates because they already are a little bit buried in the brown stuff as well as the debt um, already so unlikely and most things don't turn around and let me tell you if you don't turn around in a near zero interest rate environment you sure as hell ain't turning around in any other monetary environment um, so for me this only gets worse so this is the trade we'll show you the chart how I prepared it I did a little bit of a, a draw there uh, let's bring him up let's bring him up and here it is uh, with a little bit more of that so I'm showing you the trend the 0809 your subprime Lehman's your China your Fed uh, rate U-turn and uh, repo QE after telling us they were bringing their balance sheet back. You're into your third reflation and this week was a critical week because we actually turned. So let's just drop it down. I'm on a weekly time frame. I'm going to bring you right down um, into let's go to the daily shall we uh, and we're looking at this little high over here you'll notice that we actually had what we refer to as an upside HVF here we were wondering if it would be up or down so there was uh, a little bit of dissension in the ranks um, and there was a risk it was going to break upside uh, and it has done um, but it has only got as far as 88.50 and this has turned very nastily back down um, in the following literally few days so you're getting this four or five days after the premium guys uh, and the updates that are there and you've got to remember importantly that this was your high your secular high for the second impulse very close 89 so guess what that means remember everything is about a trade how do we piece a trade I'm in essence giving you a potential um, trade in the market this is not an easy thing to trade by the way you need to trade small it's quite a weighty um, uh, it's going to seize quite a bit of your margin by that is what I mean. Uh, I find it on CMC. I think you'll probably get it on IG. Uh, and if you, you know, Schwab, I have options on this. So I'm talking th through my trade. Anything I talk about as a potential trade, you can almost take it as it's something I'm interesting, interested in. And I either have a trade on it or will be considering one. In this case, I already have put options on this particular underlying with a very long cycle. I got the longest I could. Which which uh, for me was two years. Um, so we need to see some fireworks within that time frame. And I, my, my sense is this third impulse is already pretty long and it should be close to the peak uh, point. And this down point may well have been a critical point. So technically speaking, you could have, if you were on our team um, in our premium area, join on the, jump on the links below if that's of interest to you, by the way. Uh, our community you could have got short there on the, the sell-off or a little bit later and I could say you could put a stop there but if you wanted to be super safe you could say come and get me on the other side of the second impulse up top here as well that's still quite far but when I tell you what we're looking for out of this to the downside um, you'll be shocked this is a setup in our um, sniper circle and not only are we looking for a low we're looking for a low far lower than the previous low in other words this will be the reset for bad debt I mean, literally, that we're going to be drowning in it and most of it's going to be worth next to nothing in terms of valuation. So be aware of that. Um, and if you wanted to find out our target, as I say, you can uh, uh, just jump on and have a chat with us if you'd like to join our community but it's going to be huge and there will probably be a high level of overperformance possible as well in terms of this okay um, so it's turned down by the way it could be a false we can be absolutely wrong this can blow through this 89 level and it's just not happened uh, in that case we're wrong um, we could take uh, this 88.5 as well um, in due course and that could also be uh, proven as uh, not the final turning point we might go up one more time before we roll over there's many tendencies to be a little early you know people have been thinking the reset's due for ages at some point it will strike um, and my assessment is in terms of this high yield that it's running out of runway generally but who knows it can carry on a while longer okay so let me just delete uh, that I'll show you a trick that we do as well just technically when you are looking to do your trading yourself and that is that you should be looking um, at charts upside down as well so I'm going to invert this chart for you 
and show you, uh, for those of you that think, ah, I don't know how to short, and, and most things don't look like a short to you when you're a new trader. So what I'm going to say to you is, is the inversion here of look like a long? Now, if that's the case, and you're building up something that has a lot of spike potential to the upside uh, and potential continuation uh, to the upside, then maybe this could be it for you. So I'm going to, as well, I'm going to just change the reds to green because that, like me, might provoke your autism and your dyslexia and every other uh, mental ailment that you have, um, much, much like myself. Uh, I'm going to switch them around and make the red green and the green red. And I'm going to leave the others uh, on the settings. Okay. Uh, and we're going to pull that through a little bit. So what you can see is obviously this is the loss of value. The upside moves is the loss of value. So you've got to look at this and say, are we at a key turning point having based out slowly, slowly grinding a little lower and slipped a little lower? But there's very close to that support point over there. Very close indeed. So it, again, let's pull this through. I might just switch to the monthly just to have a look at this properly because that looks a little intense, those candles on top of each other. You can get a little bit more uh, granular feel for the data. Is this the beginning of about no you, that's a bit early you know you've just had a final dip usually you get a final capitulation when you're making a low aka low off high um, but and you can see the volatility very very low near these lows it starts to get very very low so you'll see it here in the rounded bottom here very low let's get the pen to draw there we go small bodies um, and then the big action comes on the big moves so you've got to ask yourself the next debt crisis we've had um, three cycles in essence here yeah? one two and three how do you think the third one's going to go if it's going to blow the top one off here and go to new highs which is actually new lows remember the inverted scale then you'll have a feeling for what i'm talking about we had a very low vol period right there and we did a little dip through so often that final little sell is what happens um, before uh, things get a little bit interesting you had it here for example very low volatility making new lows you came down you couldn't make a new low and then you started going so just because it turns doesn't mean it's immediately to the break i would still say this was time to come but if you're trading options if you're getting in you want to get these things out of the money in the money or if you're trading a spread bet you've got to think about what levels you would like to get in and of course the earlier the closer you are to your stop loss in my case i would say a, a very strong stop loss is just at the top there um, possibly if you wanted to be a bit more aggressive um, the wick high stroke low there okay so we've taught you a technique inverting your charts we've mentioned it before we've discussed the big short how to trade the big debt failure um, and we've given you a trade idea that comes straight out of our, our premium community um, remember test the margin size it's small make sure you have a suitably enough account and trade very small you might need to even do fractions of one pound a point if you're on a spread bet or cfd so watch that it's a weighty contract okay guys um, jump on the links below if you want to come and book in and have a chat to find out how to do more in your trading in all kinds of markets not just crypto not just equities here we try a debt market play that's all part of the reset um, of the great financial system okay hope you enjoyed the video catch you later all the best bye bye